And who's at the top? I think that's supposed to be the woman. Yeah, it is supposed to be the woman. That's a little pussy hole right there. Yeah. You know that that you, you know the songs that say my my pussy is pink and my booty hole brown. That's what that onk is. It's a brown booty hole sitting on your chest. Right. All right. So you was asking. You, you, both of y'all had good questions. Real good questions. You was talking about the onk. Yeah. You said that it came from Egypt. From what I read, yeah, it started in Egypt. And it, it did. Man, woman, and child on the onk, all that represents. Yeah. And who's at the top? I think that's supposed to be the woman. Yeah, it is supposed to be the woman. That's a little pussy hole right there. Yeah. You know that that you, you know the songs that say my my pussy is pink and my booty hole brown. Make it play. That's what that onk is. T it's a brown booty hole sitting on your chest. Right. Well, that's that's what you want to see in it. Like, no, that's not what I want to see. It. That's what it is. But when I right. it, what it's supposed to represent is representing life. You looking at it like somebody you can somebody can say the same thing about a cross and tell you that representing Jesus. We don't represent the cross either. But, right. right. But see that I feel like what you saying that I don't know. I mean you could be right. Let me reel it back in real quick. Let me like let more me of an opinion. A let me, opinion me. Okay, let's we're gonna cut the opinion. We gotta have a standard. Do you believe in the Bible? Not hundred percent, no. Okay, so we teach the Bible. Right. That's what right. we teach. But so how did you learn that you're an Egyptian? But all of that's not that's some of that's that's my question to you. How did you learn I that learned, you're an Egyptian? I learned it from reading. I learned from I mean, I, I grew up in church, but I ain't really never feel that. I ended up teaching my learning myself, reading uh, five percenters, reading about Hebrew Israelites, God, body, all of that. If you read about Hebrew Israelites or the Israelites, you would know that the descendants of the people that were brought here on slave ships were not Egyptians. We are the descendants of the people that were brought here on slave ships. Right. So that means that we are not who? You said not Egyptians. Hold on, hold on. You you got a you got a onk on your chest. Are you an Egyptian? Or are you not an Egyptian? Uh, I'm waiting for the symbol that I that I think is represent, not that I'm Egyptian. Do you understand your nationality according to the Creator, the Most High God? What I'm supposed to be, as far as I know. Who are you supposed to be? I'm supposed to be a black man, but I don't know. The I'm, Creator didn't black, create any black, black men. I don't know everything. Exactly. Okay, okay, all right. So you don't know. That that's fair enough. You don't know. And I mean, if you I know, don't, I know I'm a black man. Yeah, I know that. Right, well, you know that's the complexion of your skin. Niggas, that's what they label. That. Right, right, right. Now the people that they label as black, the people they label as nigger, the people they label as African American, biblically, their name is Israelites. Right, right. right. The people that descend from the ones that were brought here on ships, served slavery, are the twelve tribes of Israel. Right. All right. So now, if you study a little something, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna come right back to that. We're gonna come right back to that. Give me First Corinthians 11. I got a son who is like Seattle. All right. What's his name? Rakim. Rakim. Okay. Okay. All praise. Is he with Israel United in Christ? He the first one to put me on the uh, uh, King James. Black. It's a black man. I've never heard that before. All right. Now I'm gonna show you what the Bible says, and we're gonna compare it to what the Ankh represents. The Ankh represents the woman over the men and children. All right. But this is what the Bible says. First Corinthians 11 and 3. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Really? But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ is over the man. He's the leader of the men. All right? We got that first point. We don't want to call. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head, the leader of the woman is the man. So that would mean that the that would mean that the onk is incorrect and it's teaching you lies. Right. I didn't. I, I mean, I, I didn't look at it like the woman was the head because uh, it don't matter how you look at it. What it represents is woman worship, and that the woman is superior to the man. Right. That's, that that's the life inside of a woman. That, I'm sorry. That life comes from a woman. Right. Did you know that women don't have life inside of them? I know that. I know all of that. Man. The life of a the life of mankind is inside of a man's scrotum. That's right. right. We carry the life. Right. Right. So if that's supposed to be a representation of life, all it would be is a penis with some balls. That's that's it. That's what life would represent, because that's the only place life is. Inside of a woman is nothing but death. Right. That's why they bleed every month. That's right. why they have a menstrual cycle. Right. That all everything that's inside of them dies. See. All right. Now 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 drop that. Give me Exodus chapter eleven verse seven, and then I want her back at two and twelve. Read. Exodus chapter 11 verse 7 uh -huh. But against any of the children of Israel Which we are We are the children of Israel We are the Israelites We come from the 12 tribes of Israel I come from the tribe of Judah My brother right here come from the tribe of Gad Right? You need to understand what tribe you come from Read on Shall not a dog 
move his tongue uh -huh. against man or beast Read. that ye may know. There's something very particular and specific that God wants you to know. What does he want you to know? How that the Lord that put a difference. God put a difference. Between the Egyptians. Between the Egyptians. And Israel. And Israel. That's right. But guess what that difference is? The difference between the Egyptians and Israel is God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right. The difference between the Egyptians and Israel is the Egyptians put a woman over the man, but Israel, according to God, puts the man over the woman. Right. But let's get Ham in the, in the meantime. Maybe try the verse seven. This Zonovan Bible Compact Dictionary. Teach you a lot. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, uh -huh. born probably about 96 years before the flood. So we're talking about Ham, the forefather Ham. Read. And one of eight persons to live through, through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So the Bible says that Ham, Ham, Ham became the progenitor of the dark races. Are we dark races? Yes. We're dark race, right? Read on. Not the Negroes. But we also are the Negroes, right? So Ham is the forefather of the dark races. But this other dark race, Ham is not the forefather of. Right. So let's find out who Ham is the forefather of. But the Egyptians. Oh, so the Egyptians' forefather, their ancient forefather, is Ham. But our ancient forefather is Shem. That's right. right. And we live by a completely different code than the so-called Egyptians. That's right. right. We were the ones that were enslaved to the ancient Egyptians. Right. We were being ruled over by the ancient Egyptians. Right. right. We're going in Ham that was no curse. Yeah, but we don't come from Ham. Right, so that right. curse don't apply to us. That's right. And it wasn't Ham that he cursed. It was Canaan. It was his grandson that was cursed. All right? And the Bible didn't say Ham saw Noah naked and he cursed him? He cursed his son. His, like, Noah's grandson, which is, his name was Canaan. That's the person who was cursed. Was that it? Oh, uh, we got more. Read. Ethiopians. The Ethiopians come from Ham. Libyans. Libyans come from Ham. And Canaanites. Uh-huh. His intimacy when his father lay drunken but a curse. All right, so the whole reason that they were cursed was because of the, what you had just referenced. But I want you to understand, how you doing, my sister? Doing well. What we are here talking about right now is the, the difference between the standard that God has set for, set for us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right, right. God gave us a code to live by called his laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. And in the society that we live in, they have other standards that are set up that are in opposition to what God has set up for us. Have you ever heard of an ankh? Kind of looks like a cross, but it got a hole at the top. You know what the ankh represents? It represents, the hole at the top represents a woman's vagina. Right? And then the part at the bottom represents a man's phallus, his penis. And what the, the whole symbolism of an ankh is that a woman is more superior than a man. That's the symbolism that, that's given through the unk, right? But that's in opposition to God because God says that the man is over the woman. Right. That's what God says. And that's what our standard must be. So we can't walk around with things on our necks, on our shoes, on our chest that are in opposition to God. Those are things that we must repent from. Right. Now read what I want. Habakkuk 2 and 18. Right. What? profit it the graven image so now there's a rhetorical question being asked what profit comes from the graven image what is a graven image that's a graven image right there right a little cross that's a graven image a unk that's a graven image a, a lion on a on a necklace is a graven image read on that the maker thereof had graven it, uh -huh. the molten image, uh -huh. and a teacher of lies now we don't have an issue with graven images we have an issue with what God said about graven images. Number one, God said, don't bow down and worship them. Right. And then the second issue that we have with graven images is if that graven image teaches lies. Now, my sister, what's your name? I ain't catch your name. Melody. Sister Melody. Is what God said in the Bible true? Everything that God said in this book is true. That's right. right. Give me Psalms 119, 142. We've been lied to by people holding this book. The people holding the book are the liars. The book is true. Right. Psalms 119, verse 142. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness 
is an everlasting righteousness. The Bible says God's righteousness is everlasting, meaning that it never ends. Am I right or wrong? I'm right. Everlasting means it never ends. I got you. Let me finish this point. And thy law is the truth. God's law is the truth. And this entire book is called the book of the law. That's right. So everything that we find in this book is true. Right. Now, if I decide to come to you and lie about it, that makes me a liar. Right. But it doesn't make the book a liar. Right. All right. So what we're teaching right now is that the unk, although you know you're not an Egyptian, you're walking around with a graven image that teaches lies. Right. Because God has said that the man is over the woman. The unk says that the woman is over the man. That's a representation that's of Egypt. If you want to make me the target, that's cool. I'm not that's making you the target. Oh, I'm not making you the target. I'm teaching my people. Because you're not the only one that got the arm. Go ahead. What's your question? So when none of y'all out here doing this, ain't nobody wearing no Nikes, no Reeboks, no chains, no, no brand name t-shirts, none of that. Nobody doing it. Y'all stay in plain black. Or just what y'all got on there. Y'all never wear brand name clothes, shoes, none of that. Y'all y'all stay in this. Y'all stay in black military clothes. Nice plain. Y'all don't do nothing. Y'all don't wear Nikes. None of that. Because you, you saying us graven images we're not supposed to wear. So... So should none of y'all ever be wearing none of that if y'all saying that? I didn't Hold say that. Let, let me say one more thing. I just, oh, I just, I'm a, I'm a, I you asked the question. I want to answer the question. I'm just trying to say one thing, and, I, and, and I'm gonna say that's why, like, with me, I, I, I say I'm spiritual. I don't really follow no religions because, for one, it's another person trying to teach me that religion when, and everybody got their faults. I don't feel like another man because I very few people in the religion follow that religion to the T. People be like, I, I don't eat this, or I, I go to church and this. But then on the other side, they fall back. Then you want to come and teach me about a, a religion. Like, I've seen that happen with preachers my whole life. We're not teaching religion. I mean, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a group of people like believing in the same if thing. I, if y'all used to eat pork and I eat pork, and then you don't eat pork no more, you don't want me to eat pork. People do that too. No, nah, so Melody that's and uh, what's your name? I ain't catch your name. Lorenzo. Just Lorenzo, people okay. Were, were people were trying to teach a way of living. They half of the people. Most, when my, I ain't saying everybody, because y'all might be straight. Come on, land the plane before I forget for everything. Most, you're saying, yeah. For the most part, people that try to teach me how to live, I see them in fault all day. They they, they come to church getting money. People for, and everybody in church broke, but the preacher got money. And yeah. I see deacons. I seen deacons be mad. I'm messing with a right. guy in church because they wanted her. Like y'all people are supposed to be the people we supposed to look up to. So I, when people try to come tell me what I'm I'm doing wrong, what I'm wearing wrong, or how I'm looking at something wrong. I don't know, cause like I said, can nobody ask me a question? I said, what y'all don't nobody wear Nikes, nobody wear no chains, no brand name clothes, and nobody say nothing. Cause you say engraving images and you just said the shoes and he got I guess I guess my shoes is whatever you want to call it. And so I asked, but nobody answered. It seems like you say you, you I started to answer and you was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me let me you wanted to keep talking. I know I just want to get a point across, but go ahead. All right, so you got your point across, all right? The issue that we have is when something goes contrary to God. Right. All right? We're not telling you that you can't wear Nikes, right? We're not telling you that you can't wear Reebok. We're not telling you that you can't call Sunday, Sunday. Everything that we do, everything that we have in this world right here is rooted in idolatry. Right. Everything is rooted in idolatry. What we must do is make sure that we don't follow the ways that the idols have set up for us. Right, right. All right? So is Nike a god? Yeah, yeah, Nike was a Greek god. Is Reebok a Greek god? Yeah, probably so. Does the Ankh represent a God? Yeah, it does. And what we do, we come out here, we come out here to teach what the God of Israel says according to the Bible. Right. right. So the and, the, and, and the things that the other gods teach are contrary to that. So you got to let me get my scriptures because we got to let the Bible speak. The, the, my question, you're not allowing me to answer your question. You I talked for about three minutes right there. I made one statement, and now you're telling me I didn't answer I your question. question. But I've been listening to you since I've been out here, man. And we I'm teaching. Here. We the ones teaching out here. And, everything. and you asked your question. Now I'm answering your question. But so be patient. Me, but you're trying to give me a limited time to talk. Bro, it's our platform. We came out here to teach. I'm, I'm right. We didn't come out here to listen to you. We came I'm out here to teach questions. the Bible. Isaiah 58 and 1. I'm asking questions. Isaiah chapter 58, My verse 1. So now you ask the question and I'm answering it and you walk off. That's what emotional men do. Me off right. like, I, I did not cut you off. You asked two questions. You it you took get, you five minutes to ask two mad. questions. Right, man, and I'm answering mad. your question. Read the script. Cry aloud. Spare I'm not. Uh -huh. Lift up thy voice. Like a trumpet Great. And so my people They're transgressing Our job is to show our people their transgressions right. In our community In our community We think that women and men are equal 
in our community, we think that women are more superior to men. Right. And because of that, when I see a brother with a symbol on his neck that supports that thought process, what is my job? Read it again. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, uh -huh. and show my people their transgression. Right. And the house of Jacob, their sin. My job is to show my people their sins. Right. Well, anybody, do, so nobody asks, because I know y'all do. Yeah, we wear Nikes, yeah. He got Nikes on right there. Do, do, yeah, he, I got Nikes at the house. But the, the God Nike, I don't support. Right. Sports, I don't support. Who support right. God, Nike, who does that? If you play in sports, you support the God of Nike. If Somebody you, Google that. What does so Nike represent? You not, if huh? God of victory. You just the God of victory. If you wham, you're not, you're not. So you can wham, but if you're not playing a sport, you are. But if you're not playing a sport, you're not. Look, let me, let me show you something. Let me you show you something. You now, this is what the Bible says about the clothes that we wear. Deuteronomy 28, verse 14. I mean, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48 uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy So the Bible says that we would serve our enemies And guess who our enemies are Our enemies are people that worship other gods Other than the God of Israel uh -huh. So the Bible is about to list some things That we will not have control over Read on Which the Lord shall send against thee So God sent our enemies against us in what? In hunger In hunger So guess what? I could go to a restaurant, I could go to a restaurant, and I could buy something that God says is okay for me to eat. Let's say a piece of fried chicken. Fair enough? We like fried chicken, right? Black people like fried chicken, right? Yes, black people like fried chicken. But guess what God says is not okay for the black man to eat? Swine. Exactly, swine. Fried shrimp. Now that fried, that fried fish spot, if they selling fried chicken and they selling fried shrimp, what do you think is happening with that grease? They dipping in the same grease. They dipping it in the same grease. Right. Right. So guess what? The Bible says that I have to serve my enemies for food. For food. Under God's law, is it okay for me to eat chicken that was fried in shrimp grease? No, it's not. Make it plain. But I also understand my people are under a curse and we don't have a whole lot of power over the food that we eat. Right. I can choose to not go buy shrimp. Right. I can choose to not go buy pork. Yes, but if I go buy some fried chicken that was already cooked, I don't have a lot of power about how that chicken was prepared. Right. Right. You shouldn't even be eating fried chicken. Too. That's not according to God's law. Right. That's your opinion. Right. We're not dealing with your opinion. We're dealing with what the Bible says. Yes, the right. Bible says I'm going to serve my enemies for food. Read on. And hunger. And and in thirst. And in thirst. And in thirst. Should we even have to pay for water? No. That's unlawful according to God. Right. We're not supposed to pay for water. God created water for us. Right. But guess what? I got to serve my enemies for that water. And now I got to do things that God wouldn't approve of. Jeez. Read on. One more. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. What covers our nakedness, Sister Melody? Clothing. Clothing. Do you understand that there's certain characteristics that God, certain standards that God has for clothing? I believe that. There's certain things that you're not supposed to wear. You're not supposed to wear a piece of material that's interwoven with multiple fabrics. Like what? Like you ever seen a shirt that was 50% this and 50% that? Oh, okay. all right, all right. God says that we're not supposed to do that. Right. Now how many of us now, how many of us have power over the textile industry to change how they make clothes? That's one thing we don't, that's one we thing. don't have power over that. Right. Right. Guess what? Those same industries create the shoes that we put on our feet. Right. So then what? what? What if the person that was at the manufacturing plant, when they were making all the shoes that don't even have the Nike sign on it, offered all the shoes to a false god? Then what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to walk around here barefoot, me Melody? Are you supposed to be at work with nothing on your feet because the people that made the shoes were in evil? No, no you got to put some shoes on your feet, sister. You, that's common sense. You got to put some shoes on your feet. Right. Now, Melody. It don't got to be Nikes or Adidas. It don't have to be. It don't have to be, but you won't listen to what I just said. I just I gave you a scenario, a pair of shoes with no Nike or Adidas sign on it. But the people, all right, my sister, but the people that create the shoes offer the sacrifice to an evil God before they made the shoes and it don't have a Nike check mark on it. Right. <coughs> That's
that's no more lawful. But what we're talking about right now, we're not talking about clothing. We're talking about jewelry. Something that you don't even have to have on your neck at all. Right. And not only that, the jewelry that you have on teaches lies. Right. right. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!